Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I basically spend my time advocating that each individual on this planet have the opportunity to experience their dream. I do so as this is considered a divine right that the preparation has been made that you might experience such, each of you. And that being my understanding in a place where it seems to be missing, I take the challenge. But I want to say <clears throat> that we as Americans and people of the world, we stand in a weird time. I won't say that it has never happened before, but it is definitely weird today. It is a time, as all times have been, when righteousness is challenged. When I say righteousness, I'm talking about the good things that would cause dreams to happen for everyone, and unrighteous or evil, that which takes away from that. Doesn't mean that there aren't some that experience that. In fact, that's exactly what it means. Some experience and the rest are robbed thereof. <clears throat> and so when I speak to you as a spokesman, I'm really advocating that you, the people, have the power to stand up and make things right, to do things to make things right. It doesn't make sense for you to want good things to happen, but you only wish it to happen. You hope it will happen. And when you are hoping, you are hoping that someone else will do it. You are hoping that someone will come out of the clouds and save you. You are hoping when you have the power to take charge of that responsibility and do it now. The only reason you don't is because you don't know it. And you don't know it because it's been held as a secret from you. Because there are those who are, I would consider, on the other side that robs the rest of their dreams. Don't want you to know it because if you know it, then they have to accept their dreams excluding power over you. And so, <clears throat> when I look at the world and I see two conditions, two extremes, we look at America, I say America because that's where I am. And we say we're the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. We believe that. The Russians believe that about Russia. The Chinese believe that about China. The North Koreans believe that about North Korea. But we say that one of the greatest threats on the planet today is North Korea. And yet we challenge North Korea and say that, remember, when our nation was challenged, what we did? That's bragging. That's bragging to a people who don't know what you're going to do and might just decide not to give you that chance or and take a chance so that in the event you do retaliatory stuff, and it gets them, at least, they can go down saying they got you. There are a lot of people who think that way. And I'm saying, when I talk about things that we, we the people, really got some control over from day to day, outside of the air we breathe and the body we live in, and the water we drink, we're talking about food, clothing, and shelter. Things that we have been qualified to deal with. We think about education and health care. Things are needed. Everybody needs that to even think about going further. To even think about a dream that's worth anything. You want these things met. And every human being requires it. So it seems like it's one of the things that would be easy for the human race to guarantee to one another. Because to do so means that you will never be absent thereof. Yet I find that the human race doesn't work that way. Because evil doesn't see that. Evil only sees self. Evil says, I change the world. Evil says, I control the government. Evil says, I am the boss. Evil says, you are fired. Evil says, I do what I want to do. And I tell you what to do. That's evil. Now you can say what you want to say. A lot of people fall in line with that. Because all they want to do is get a piece of it. They don't know 
this power. They've heard about it, but they truly don't know this power. And what is it that allows the negative to be so powerful and moving and active and the positive to be so reserved? As if things would just work itself out. Well, I think it's this. The positive will allow the negative to do its thing while they hope and speak out against what negative is doing. Hoping that you can differentiate between what's real and what's not and that you will take care of that. But you don't. And so negative keep on doing negative things. And as a result, they grow. And so how many of us <coughs> are standing up against anything that would deny any human being food, clothing, and shelter, education, and health care? How many of us are standing up against any power anywhere on the face of the earth that would deny human beings these necessities for survival? I'm sure there may be some. At least I hope so. <clears throat> many of you who say, well, my little bit won't help. Your little bit went to the polls and voted for the lesser of two evils. Now you've got what you call a lesser two evils in the White House, and they've got the other evil over in North Korea, that they say. So what happens now? you got two evil regimes, North Korea and the United States. What happens now? Who's a big bully? Who's going to step forward and act anyway? Who is going to sacrifice all of your lives, your children's lives, lives of other people across the globe, who is going to sit by and allow that to happen? Well, I hope you answer that. My real reason for mentioning those things to you today is to say also something that I don't refer to that often, and that is this. We can try to find all kinds of excuses if we like. Reasons why we say we don't join in the righteousness side, we say it's useless. We say we can't gain anything from it. Whatever excuse you make, you make them. And they are made because righteousness is losing on the globe. But I want to say to you is though that is not an excuse. That is not an excuse. Because what I have been saying to you about you as individuals and how it works together as a group, I want you to know also that that works for you as an individual. You have a responsibility to do right if you know what right is. If you don't do right, that's because you don't know what right is. And unless somebody else is doing right, they can't complain. So in order to complain about unrighteousness, you gotta be doing righteousness. And you don't have to do much complaining. Because if you are doing righteousness in an unrighteous situation, you're going to stand out. So who's standing out today? Any government agency? And those who are standing out, what are they standing out for? Rejoicing that they think they've come up with a way to scam and rip off more of the people for their own selfish glory, knowing that there is no righteousness on the other side just so we coming on our way they say next time they'll be right on the same bandwagon where will righteousness be i ask you where is righteousness is it here unseen can't touch it can't feel it and homeless you as an individual we as individuals all over the earth are expected, are expected to recognize the truth and pull that life in you and live bound by the guidance of your conscience, doing what you know is right according to the spirit that is in you and not ashamed. And any challenges that come are there for a reason, for adjustments to be made, for clarity to be brought about. 
so people can understand. We don't run from this. This is our duty. This is our responsibility. Being led by light, we are the salt. Being led by light, we do bring the message. Being led by light, we sometimes threaten that which does not want to see. But yet, we have to go forward. I'm going to leave that with you, ladies and gentlemen. I have put together a couple of things I wanted to say. Things like, if I may just mention some, some of them, some governments are enemies of the people. And the people must protect themselves from such government. And then I said that only righteous law is to be respected. You know, when you've got an unrighteous system, they're going to make all kinds of rules and regulations that are unrighteous to protect unrighteous system. But those of you who know what righteousness is must walk according. Well, I don't say must walk according to righteousness. You are going to walk according to righteousness. Now, <clears throat> I had written that America now is ruled by slave owners. Slave owners. Enforced by slave laws. Each working against the people. Slave laws, that's why you got poverty. That's why you got homelessness. You got crime and violence. You got prisons overflowing. That's because the slave master is in charge. And we the people, we the citizens must reject this attempt to establish what? white supremacy in the United States. We must protect the basic inalienable rights. This is what I'm saying and what I have said to you earlier when the mission is as spokesman and advocate for basic human rights. That is what it entails. But my main concern, and I want you to really focus on it, is poor people. Let us, poor people, serve God by serving justice. I'm asking everybody, let us, what? good to talk about serving justice to a people who are as blind as a bat. I got videos I go back, you know, and I see myself still kind of young man. I'm in my middle 30s then. Still hoping and every day believing that this will be the day, as our old saying would say, that God is ready to work for us. And all of those years have passed. And the only thing left for me to do is to find some reason to die for the cause. I made a commitment when I started out that even though I love the good life, the good life means having the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's what the good life means. And when I was talking to you about all these bills for things, I know those of you who are caught up in this economy talking about how that's going to happen, how it's going to be paid for. It's going to be paid by everybody getting a job. And those jobs are going to be in the areas of creating those goods and services so beautifully described. And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, thinking about a way to not just waste time talking to you when you know darn well the only thing, I'm just, listen, to me, this is what I see. The only thing that will make Americans straighten up and fly right, and other people in other parts of the world too, is if those fires keep burning, if those hurricanes and floods keep destroying cities and towns. When the air has been made so small of those of you that's remaining, till you can't see anything to do but fall on your knees. Then maybe, just maybe, you will get it right. But if that doesn't happen, the tsunamis that's crossing the waters in other places of the world, showing that, I don't care who you call yourself, what you call yourself, you still just the creation and you don't control the creator. And this is also a message to those of you who think that these powers that you have established above you are God. They're telling you all the time they're not. But everybody it appears to see, it, it appears have different views about everything. And that's okay. Your different views represent 
who you are. But when it comes down to existence, to survival, those things that are common amongst you, you find out <laughs> that those views are the same as far as having them, your needs met. Now, some of you decide that you want your needs met and you don't care about other folks met. Now, that's all you got a different view. That's old foreign view. It's come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I would ask, why not learn today? Why wait until tomorrow? Why not do it now? You got the power. You as an individual, you got more power over your life than everybody put together on the United States and the whole world put together. You got more power over your life. You got the power to recognize living in joy and ultimate, what the greatest joy imaginable, or living in pure hell. It's all in your power. Your power. In, in the end, you won't be able to blame your government. You really won't be able to blame another race. You won't be able to blame another gender. You won't be able to blame a snake. You can only blame yourself because it's there and it has always been there and it always will be there. If you're not having it, it's because you are not there. My message as I leave is get there. Bye-bye.